Well, if you take some skin, jazz begins. Take a bass. Down in New Orleans, about 100 years ago, some new take music was coming on. It took the world by storm. That music was, of course, jazz. And little old Australia, she came right on into the party. So, Mel, tell me, when did this museum start? It started in 1999 in, in this premises here. And how many objects have you got in the collection? Well, in our Australian collection, we've got over 15,000 items catalogued. In addition to that, we've probably got about 20,000 overseas uh, recordings and uh, photographs available for, as a reference collection. Now, is jazz as popular today as it ever was? Yes, as you know, you know Australia's had a, an enormous tradition of, uh, of jazz dating back, well, the early times, but certainly in, in the 50s and 60s. So Mel, what are your favourite objects in the collection? Amongst my own personal ones, I think probably um, the, the white plastic Grafton saxophone was given to Aid Monsborough, who was the uh, reed player in the Graham Bell Band on their second tour of, of England in 1952, mm -hmm. and it was a given to him as a promotion because they wanted to uh, it's plastic. sell it. Yeah, it's plastic. <laughs> <laughs> this uh, soprano saxophone belonged to Dr. Philip Law, who oh, was the, uh, the Antarctic uh, yeah. explorer yeah, who yeah. died just recently. My and, gosh. and this soprano sax has been to uh, Antarctica. That is cool jazz. <laughs> <laughs> now, I've read in your fact file there were over 14,000 voluntary hours in one year. How many volunteers have you got? Well, we've got about 50 on our list. It's not unusual to have 30, 35 people turn up for uh, unpaid work. Without those volunteers and the enthusiasm, this place couldn't exist. This is one of the, the first records that was produced with Australian jazz in Australia. And you can see they were a bit short of shellac at that time, so yeah. they used some sort of plastic material. Some red plastic. This is just a, a small example of our huge photo collection that we have. This mm -hmm. is a wonderful one here. <laughs> one uh, car. One car, so I'd, no, nobody's wearing seatbelts. No, belts. indeed. <laughs> We've got hundreds of these and we're digitising them. And acetates were what they used uh, before they had LP records and things like that. It's um, damaged. It's damaged, yeah. So this is our challenge to save all this. Time is the enemy. They all deteriorate. Of course. And so we've digitised it. Right. Um, this stuff we, uh, has been put onto, eventually onto CDs, and they form part of our collection that is available okay. through the Jazz Archive. Imagine if you could buy tickets to that now. Glenn uh, Miller, Benny Goodman and, and Count, Count Basie, Basie yeah. had an afternoon swing. There's always gaps in our collection. Uh, the thing that we would really like to have is uh, jazz material from contemporary musicians, young people who are starting out now, yeah. and they don't see themselves as part of the future history of Australia because they're young. We would encourage anybody who's involved to donate to us. Come home, come home.